This side, when we check the thyroid, and we have now moved our patient back to the front, right? Taking everything away. Uh, we are going to watch you breathe. Kind of kind of sit there you go. There you go. Look at her face. Look at her coloring. Make sure she's not struggling at all to breathe. Watching her chest move. Okay. We don't necessarily have to always be this obvious when we're working with our patients, right? Because there's some things we can do. Um, uh, without them really paying that much of attention to what we're doing. Uh, at this point, I want to do our inspection of the breast. So we're going to make, have an assumption here that there's nothing here. Everything is closed off for the patient has some privacy. So we want you to raise your hands over your head as high as you can. Very good. Now bring them down and put them on your hips. Squeeze real tight. Okay. Now what you'll be noticing is a distribution of the skin. Is any puckering or whatever like this. Okay. Which way the nipples are going, right? Looking at the vascular uh, chair on her chest. Now take your hands like this and squeeze really, really hard. And once again, this gives us an opportunity to look from side to side for any puckering. Okay, now I'm going to put my hands out like this and I want you to put yours on top and just kind of lean this way off the table. Uh, without the top, the breast tissue would come away from the ball of the um, chest. And we're able to see if there's any dimpling or anything that looks unusual. Very good, thank you much. Okay. Now, at this point, uh, we will have our patient turn this way for us so that we can use the mirror here to help you see what I'm doing. In the clinic setting, you would not have this. The patient would continue to look forward and you just move to the back. But notice once again, I'm on the right side of the patient, or right side of the bed. Uh, whenever we are assessing the uh, chest and the lungs, um, we want to have our patient just kind of sit straight for us, just as straight as you can. Okay. We want to know if there's any pain or tenderness anywhere here. Nothing hurts you at all? Okay. We can work our way all the way down her vertebrae, nothing there? No. Okay. Then with our fingers, I want you to say, you can do it with the ulnar side, or you can do it with the tips of the fingers. We're now going to do what's called what? Vocal firmness, huh? Okay. So I want you to say 99. 99. It can be 99 or 1, 1, 1. Because we live close to 99, and most people say 99. We say 99. So 99, please. 99. Again. 99. And again. 99. Okay. Now we have um, 12 or so ribs that are floating along through here. And we're going to stop right in this vertebral angle, right through here. So she says 99, 99, 99. Our fingers are going to come together at this angle. Can you see this? Where the thumbs are together now. All right, look right into the mirror. And then for my patient, I want my patient to take a deep breath in, as deep as you can, deep breath in, very good, and blow it out. And this is called expansion. We expect these fingers, these thumbs, to move equal distance on, the, on each side when she takes a deep breath and <coughs> blows it out. Did you see that? Can you repeat it one more time? Real good deep breath. Very good. Now, in order to get this, your hands are not just like down, 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 but your hands are lightly on her back at this point. Okay? Just very lightly so that your fingers can move. Okay? You don't have a real vice grip. So one more time, please. Deep breath. Very good. All right. We okay with that? Okay. At this point, we can, since we are in the costal vertebral angle, we can go ahead now and check for CVA tenderness, right? Okay? So why not? All right? Patient may be a little bit surprised, but we're going to do an indirect percussion. Okay? <laughs> no pain? No. Not until now. <laughs> okay. Okay. Now, when we start to percuss, we want to percuss the lungs. So we want our patient now to hug herself. So I want you to lean forward kind of push these lungs right back here to me and just let everything go and we start to percuss. Now with the, with the percussion we want to use the middle and uh, finger. We want to make sure that it's planted down firmly and all of the other fingers are lifted from her body. If the other fingers were left down this would dampen the sound. Okay? We're going to use our middle finger of our right hand if we're right handed in order to uh, percuss on what's called the DIP, the distal interphalangeal, uh, okay, joint, okay, right here, okay. So we're gonna just go like this, just like a downward movement, okay. The closer you are, and we're trying to use the tip of our finger as we do it, okay. And we we do this from side to side, and we tr we try to avoid 
the scapula, okay? Have you take your arms out this way, still hugging yourself. You can percuss anywhere on the body, but just remember when you're over the bone, it's going to be what kind of a sound? A flat sound. When you're over a muscle, it's going to be dull, right? Then when you're over the lung, it should be resonant, okay? And when we're over the uh, uh, gastric bubble, it should be timpani, right? And it's hyper resonance if there's a lot of air that's trapped in there, correct? Okay. So as we are percussing, we're trying to determine the lung feel is what we're doing. And typically, you'll go from side to side. You don't have to get carried away with it, but just enough. And notice how we want to compare one side to the other. Okay? Are we all right with that? Okay, so it's all over. All right. Once we've done this, we have an idea now of how far her lung tissue spreads through this particular area. So in order to do something that's called diaphragmatic excursion, we want to now decide that you know, have, have our patient breathe in. And as our patient breathes in, because the diaphragm goes down when the patient breathes in, we will now percuss down. When we get to an area where we go from resonance to what? Dullness, because now we're at the diaphragm, we want to stop and draw a line, right? That means that our diaphragm has gone down that far, okay? So patient, take a deep breath, hug yourself again, lead forward, good, and I got my little pen. And we have our patient take a deep breath and hold it, deep breath in and hold it. Because one side of the body mirrors the other, once again our patient takes a deep breath and she holds it for us. Notice I did not start at the very top, okay? Our patient cannot hold her breath that long. Blow it out. Very good. Now we do something different. When the patient blows her air out and keeps the air out, the diaphragm goes up. Right? Okay. So in order to determine the distance, that excursion, before it went down, before it goes back up, we go to the line that we drew earlier, and this time we percuss up. Okay? Our patient takes a deep breath in, and she blows it out and keeps it out. Do not breathe back in. Okay, you can breathe now. Okay. Ready to do it again? Mm -hmm. Deep breath in, blow it out, keep it out. Okay, breathe normal. All right. At this point, we will now take our little centimeter ruler and we'll measure. Typically, um, the distance is anywhere from three to five centimeters. I think your textbook says five to six centimeters. I like three to five. On this measurement, as well as I can see today, I'm looking at three over here, and I'm looking at about three and maybe a qu quarter at most. Nope, four. Four there. Someone needs to get a glasses. And four. Four and a quarter. Okay. <coughs> so, what you can do, since you may not have your chart available right away, you can just, if you have a little paper cover like this, you can write down the number here and then later on put it on your chart. And that's a perfectly good uh, range for diaphragmatic excursion that she has now. Okay. So now that we're finished with this, we can move this over to the side. And now we're ready to listen to our patient breathe. We're going to take our diaphragm up the stethoscope and we're going to have our patient breathe in and breathe out before we move the stethoscope. We're going to have this snake-like pattern as we go through, where we're going to go from one to one to two <coughs> to two to three to three. You got me? 
Okay. And then when we are finished with the back area, we'll get about 12 to 14 areas covered here on the back. Then we'll have our patient bring her arms out like this, or you can have the patient take her arms up like this. And then the whole idea is to use the axillary to listen in the anterior region of the lung. On this side, listen anteriorly on this side, medial over on this side, medial down here, we're moving down a little bit, and then mostly lateral, and then lateral. Okay. Is that all right? Yeah. Okay, let's see how we do. Okay, patient, barrel chested again. Well, kind of hook yourself. And we're going to start up high. Okay, deep breath each time I touch you with the stethoscope. too fast, okay? Very good. Now raise your arms for me. Good. Deep breath. Now, because our patient does not have hair on her body, you know, well, a gross amount of hair on her body, uh, because she has no clothing on her body, my stethoscope, I can put it directly to skin to stethoscope, right? There's no interference. I don't hear any rubbing. I don't hear anything but her breathing, which is really good, all right? Now, at this point, we start to listen for adventitious sounds and all, all the way through. Okay, we're listening for our crackles and our wheezes and the ronchi and all of this that, you know, any kind of a friction rub, anything <coughs> that might be there uh, that is abnormal. But right now we're hearing equal breath sounds on both sides in all positions, so there's nothing that's unusual with her right now, okay? So therefore, in a regular clinic setting, everything's normal, color is good, skin is warm, pulses are great, no heart problems, you can stop right now. But we're going to go on and do some additional tests, right? Okay, so we're going to do something called bronchophony, okay? And bronchophony is where we're going to have our patients say 99 again. Because we are listening through the stethoscope, we expect that 99 to be a little muffled, right? If there was consolidation, that 99 would sound like it was broadcasting in the room, okay? Okay, so let's go, go through um, bronchopathy now. We do not have to go in 12 or 14 different places. Right? We're going to just do six places. That's enough from one side to the other. So patient, if you once again go back to your barrel chested, oh yeah, just kind of hug yourself there. And say 99 each time the stethoscope touches your back. 99, 99, 99, 99, 99. 99. Okay, very good. Did you notice that the distance also was, was uh, broader, wider than when I was listening, mm -hmm. when I was auscultating? Okay. Uh, at this point, we're now going to do something called egophony. And this is where the E should sound like E. Once again, it's going to be really muffled. But if the E starts to sound like A, we have a problem, don't we? Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. Okay, let's, let's, what would the problem be? Once again, fluid, some kind of something's there. Okay. <coughs> All right. So let's say E each time the stethoscope touches your back. E, 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 E. Okay. Good deal. Now one last one. 